On July 6th of 2018, a tweet from an 11-year-old girl started formally with an introduction. Hi, I'm Linda O'Keefe, or Linda Ann O'Keefe if I'm in trouble with my mom. I'm wearing a dress today. It's white with light blue flowers on it and dark blue trim. My mom made it. She makes a lot of my clothes and my sister's clothes. She's really good at sewing, and we don't have a lot of money for fancy store outfits anyhow. Orchid Avenue. That's the street I grew up on. It's a small house, and we've lived here most of my life. At 8 a.m., I walk out my front door. My piano teacher is giving me a ride to summer school. Linda's summer classes are at Lincoln Intermediate in Corona Del Mar, California. She would normally bicycle to school, but this day, she didn't have to when her piano teacher kindly offered to drop her off. This kindness, unfortunately, had a problematic result, which was when class let out at noon, she didn't have her bike, which normally took her just seven minutes to get home, and she was dreading the one and a half mile walk that would probably now take her half an hour. So she decided to call her mom to pick her up. I'm back in the school office and the lady lets me call my mom for a ride home this time. It doesn't go well. She's busy with the sewing project and tells me that I can walk home. It makes me upset and I cry. I'm an easy crier. Even if I wanted to walk home, which I don't, I wouldn't leave right now. I'm still upset about not getting a ride home. I sit on the curb in front of the school with my feet sticking out on the street. I'll leave soon. The most chilling thing about these tweets is that Linda O'Keefe, as she started walking home, was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and murdered shortly after. And this happened 50 years ago in 1973. The case had grown cold and the killer remained free until technology gave her a voice again and a determined police department took a shot in the dark and something hit. My name is Killian, and welcome to True Crime Stories. Linda Ann O'Keefe, pictured here sitting on her father's lap on the left, was born on May 24th of 1962 to Richard and Barbara O'Keefe. Richard was a machinist and Barbara was an artist working at the time as a seamstress. Even at an early age, Linda gravitated towards nature, and nature gravitated towards her as well. According to her sister Cindy, all Linda had to do was kneel down on the ground and the forest creatures from newts to snakes would come right up to her. So right in line with her personality, she would join the Girl Scouts, which I need to interject here, that Samoas are their best cookies, period. She loved jazz music, her favorite was Billie Holiday. She loved reading a good mystery, her favorite being Nancy Drew, described by her family as a lovely soul who viewed the world with the same light and always saw the good in people. But on July 6th of 1973, having just turned 11, someone, a monster, would take all that away from her. After failing to convince her mother to pick her up, Linda sat sulking in front of the school a bit before starting her long walk home. At 1.15 p.m., that would be an hour since she tried calling her mother, a neighbor girl named Janine and her mother drove past the 11-year-old girl, but she wasn't alone. She was talking to a white man in a turquoise van. Something about the scene felt a little bit odd to Janine, but otherwise, it didn't look like Linda was in any distress so they simply drove by. But Janine's initial instinct was right. That was the last known sighting of Linda O'Keefe alive. When Linda wasn't home by dinner, her mother knew something was wrong. She started calling anyone that might know anything. No one did. She hopped in her car and started driving around the neighborhood, hoping every turn would reveal her disgruntled daughter walking home. But nothing. She had no other option but to call the police. An intensive search began immediately into the night and through the next day. The searchers didn't find anything, but a local architect named Ron Yeo and his young son were biking along a nature trail named Back Bay looking for frogs, but instead came across the gruesome body of a young girl. It was Linda. She had been raped and then strangled to death and tossed in a ditch. 
She still had on the dress her mother made her, as well as a homemade book bag. So out of everyone in this case, for me, Linda's mother Barbara is the one I feel for the most. Hers is the kind of guilt that will eat at you for the rest of your life. The kind that will haunt you in the middle of the night, knowing that if you had just made another decision, it would have changed everything. I'm not sure if I ever could, if it was me, but I do hope Barbara was able to find peace, as well as everyone who was affected by the loss of Linda. The town was shaken by the situation. They also took it personally. Everyone became more vigilant. Linda's classmates would take to their bikes and comb the neighborhood for that strange turquoise van. But nothing came of their efforts, nor that of detectives. The case would agonizingly stall and eventually grow cold. Four and a half decades would go by when in 2017, a cold case unit headed by Sergeant Court Debweg had on his desk the murder of a young girl named Linda O'Keefe. In the 45 years this case spent on the shelf, technology had finally caught up. Detectives were especially thrilled when they learned that a forward-thinking criminalist at the time of her murder had swabbed semen from her body and preserved it so well that in the eyes of today's scientists, they were practically staring at the killer. The sample was sent to Parabon Nano Labs, where genetic characteristics were identified and a composite of the culprit was generated at 20 years old as well as age progressed 45 years. Now armed with irrefutable evidence, all they needed now was to match it to someone. With the help of Jen Manzella, a spokeswoman of the Newport PD, they devised the series of tweets on Linda's behalf that I read for you earlier. The goal was simple, to get the composite seen by as many people as possible, and it worked, as several million people viewed the image and numerous leads came flooding in. Detectives spent months working those leads, but again, the killer remained elusive. But this did not discourage detectives. In August of 2018, they went back to Parabon and asked them to search the database of genealogy websites and instead of an exact match, just look for possible relatives. It took six months, but they finally identified a third cousin and from there, all they had to do was piece together a family tree, a timeline and pick out the possible suspects. But the scientists at Parabon went above and beyond. They started accessing private databases where people voluntarily sent in their DNA to view relatives, an example being 23andMe. And it was there that they found an exact match to a 72-year-old man named James Allen Neal. Detectives flew to Colorado to pay the man a visit, but before they could make themselves known, they first had to get his DNA, leaving no room for error. They arranged for the local trash collection to be handed over to them and they followed James Neal for the next three days. The trash didn't provide any reliable samples, but it was on the third day that they observed Neal sitting in his car smoking and then discarding the butt out the window. That was all detectives needed as the DNA from that cigarette matched the semen found in Linda's body. Born in 1946 as James Albert Layton Jr., he was a resident of Newport Beach at the time of the murder. Shortly after the story broke, he suspiciously moved to Florida where he promptly changed his name to James Allen Neal. His record showed that he had been arrested 12 times for varying crimes, from car theft to counterfeiting checks to straight home robberies. It was on record that a young girl at his church had accused him of molesting her for months but would later, strangely, recant her accusation. But there did exist a pattern as he is suspected to have sexually abused numerous girls but was only charged twice with the crime of committing lewd acts on girls younger than 14. And annoyingly, he was given the equivalent of a slap on the wrist every time and detectives were even more disturbed to learn that James Neal, who was just 27 at the time he murdered Linda O'Keefe, was not only married, but expecting a child of his own 
The man drove 30 minutes into the city, assaulted and killed an 11-year-old girl and came home to his pregnant wife as if nothing ever happened. The man was truly a worthless piece of shit and I wish I could tell you that he went to trial and they threw the book at him, sent him off to prison where inmates violated him for being a child rapist and murderer. But I'm sorry I have to tell you that before any of that could happen, he died in police custody. An undiagnosed lung cancer got to him first. But hey, his final destination is that special place in hell for scum like him. What do you think should happen to people like James Allen Neal? Share your thoughts with us below. My name is Killian. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll help the channel grow. Now go protect the ones you love. And love the ones that protect you.